Yes. Good luck. Having drinks is like breaking bread. It's how our culture connects, celebrates, and even commiserates. But 24% of US adults are reduced, or don't drink alcohol, and 52% are cutting back. So whether they're abstaining for the evening or forever, these folks can feel marginalized during social and workplace events. Hi, I'm Shelly Elkovich, CEO of For Bitter For Worse. We make bold cocktails with love, not alcohol. My partner, Jeff Hegley, my partner Jeff Hegley and I have been making drinks together for decades. So when I was diagnosed with a neurological disability and broke up with booze, I felt so left out of our socializing and our traditions. And that's because most mocktails are weak, overly sweet, and full of sketchy ingredients. So Jeff and I took everything we know about flavor and occasion and botanicals and started experimenting. For Bitter For Worse is inspired by our long, sparky marriage and our love of entertaining. We launched in spring of 2020. I invented our formulas, and Jeff invented our trade secret production process, which we call reverse bootlegging. So rather than water, refined sugar, and lab-derived flavorings and or preservatives, we use certified organic botanicals and a process that yields better flavor, better texture, and the cleanest, most inclusive label in the category. And we are bringing that innovation to the Grow New York region, where we're launching the first non-alcoholic distillery in New York State, specifically at the Tech Farm in Geneva. We will benefit all aspects of the local economy because we source ingredients from local farms, we offer good manufacturing jobs, and we uplift the beverage ecosystem through private label and co-packing. These logos represent just a fraction of the relationships that we have been building over the last year and a half. We learned that New York is perfect for our company because you have more organic farms than any other state, because New York is the food, beverage, and finance capital of the US, and because Cornell offers unparalleled support for startups. It's also personal, though. We have friends and family here, and we love this region. We're coming to, to your community. Help us make it happen faster. Let's talk about the category. So more people are reducing their alcohol consumption and their unmet social needs have led to an entirely new category within total beverage alcohol, the adult non-alcoholic beverage. And it's a very exciting place. I want you to understand though that it's not soda, it's not energy drinks, it's not juices, right? It's a separate category. And 94% of consumers, purchasers, also purchase alcohol. So this is about moderation more than abstention. And it is a very exciting, fast-growing category. These numbers are from Nielsen. Um, you need to know that it's, it's just retail. This doesn't even include bars and restaurants. And the big takeaways are that the category revenue more than doubled between 2021 and 2024. And Nielsen projects it will double again within five years. So this is not a fad. This is a trend. We also know that 32% of US adults identify as category purchasers. So when we look at our initial market, we're looking at the women in this group because women are disproportionately affected by alcohol misuse and because women execute about 80% of purchases in any category. And these are photos of our actual customers. We're building intimacy at scale. And I wish you could see my inbox because we get so many thank yous from people who um, know that we are helping them improve their lives. I'm gonna share two quick stories. Donna in Texas became sober during the pandemic and was very nervous about socializing. So she created this cute bar cart with our drinks and our recipes and wowed her friends and regained her confidence. Another customer told me that she shared our drinks with her dying husband when he was in hospice. These drinks matter to people, and that's one of the reasons why we have a 43% returning customer rate. We also know that our customers are willing and able to pay more for quality, and that's partly because we're at the center of some enduring food and beverage trends. You may recognize most of these. Um, I'm gonna call out the rise of bitter flavors. We know that millennials in particular are attracted to herbaceous and bitter forward flavor profiles. And millennials are the ones who are propelling this category forward. 
So of all our awards and trophies, I am most proud of our double gold and ready to drink producer of the year award. And that's because that contest included our closest non-elk competitor, Gia, and also spirits brands such as Bullet Bourbon. So I never get tired of saying that we beat Bullet. Uh, we're also winning at wholesale. 75% of our revenue comes from wholesale brick and mortar accounts. This is notable because we launched in 2020 when the pandemic crushed our grow to market plan. We had to pivot and focus on direct to consumer sales on our website, which is very challenging and expensive for a bootstrapping startup. The way we handled that was through guerrilla PR. I landed us unpaid organic placements in New York Times, Wirecutter, and most other major outlets. This created a cult following across the country. And in fact, New York is our second market after California. So we can now take the learnings from this widespread customer base and apply them to our upcoming national retail launches. Uh, also, let's talk about velocity during the Q&A. There we go. Uh, so another potential pitfall that we overcame has to do with manufacturing. The number one reason why early stage companies fail is because they can't find someone to produce their product for them at an appropriate scale. We self-manufacture. We control our destiny, we control our quality. We also offer co-packing for other companies. This diversifies our revenue and increases our efficiency with our, our team and our equipment. So we offer co-packing to cold, boot, cold brew coffee, sparkling teas, and mocktail brands, for example. There is currently no small-scale beverage co-packer in the region, but we'll fix that. I'm very proud of what our scrappy team has accomplished with few resources. You can see that we raised a friends and family round in 2022. We're cash flow positive, and we'll maintain this thrifty mindset even as we plan for future raises to fuel our growth. We'll be profitable by 2026. It's early days and exciting times for investors. There have already been two exits, and we're on the third wave of the beverage category. So first wave, O'Doul's. Poor quality, poor flavor. Uh, second wave, arguably better flavor, industrial product. Ritual's an example of that. They had a recent exit. But the third wave, where we are prepared to lead, is with, with artisanal quality and the real ingredients that consumers want and can trust. Let's talk about the awards. At 250,000, we can create two jobs in the region. 500K, we moved to Geneva, and we can offer co-packing services for eight companies the first year. With the, with the million dollar prize, we'll have our full Geneva production facility. We'll be able to co-pack for 15 companies the first year. We'll create nine jobs in the region, direct jobs in the region the first year, with a total of 18 total. <laughs> with a total of 18 jobs. Um, I want to just take a moment and talk about that multiplier because we engaged with Dr. Todd Schmidt, Cornell economist, who created a bespoke multiplier for us based on our actual purchasing patterns. And what we learned is that we have doubled the impact because of our local sourcing. So again, the Million Dollar Prize will launch the first non-alcoholic distillery in New York State it will lead us to 18 million in revenue and the total of 200, uh, 213 jobs by 2028. We're small but mighty. Uh, we have an outsized impact on the category. I've been a panelist in two of the most influential discussions of the category to date, including one that was moderated by the Wall Street Journal. I'm also a Tory Burch Fellow and a PepsiCo Stacy's Rise alum. Jeff and I have complementary skills. He's an MIT-trained inventor. His purview is all things uh, production, co-packing. My background is small farms education and marketing. I create our formulas, and I am the brand builder. Together, we are committed and coachable. We have awesome advisors. That's my superpower. It's attracting great people. So you can see we've got great minds in finance, strategy, and beverage. I'm inviting you to invest in us and add for bitter for worse to the Grow New York story. We offer you a winning recipe. We are passionate, coachable, we've got key hires coming and we've got great advisors. We are in market with exceptional velocity and consumer loyalty. We're positioning ourselves for acquisition. We have trade secret IP and in addition to the 
to the jobs. We will help uplift the um, fruit and farm and juice processing industry, and we will provide a link between the region and this very vibrant global category. Thank you, I look forward to taking your questions.